when you want an uh, organization to buy in one, so you first need to go and try to do like a quick win. You need to demonstrate value on what you're doing, where you can show success. Welcome to Process Pioneers, the show that takes a deep dive into the minds of decision makers, key influencers, and process experts who are pioneering the world of everything process. Welcome to the next episode of Process Pioneers. My name is Daniel Rayner. I'm the host of Process Pioneers. And in today's episode, I have the absolute privilege of sitting down with Roberto Gallo. Now, Roberto is a senior process architect and BPM practitioner. So exactly uh, the type of person that we like to have on our show. Uh, Very excited for this conversation. Roberto, thanks for joining me. Hey, Daniel. Thanks so much for having me on your show. So one question, Roberto, that um, all of um, a lot of our audience uh, likes to find out or ask is how did you get started in BPM? Because there's many different uh, in talking with, you know, over 100 people now that work in this space. Um, some of them stumble into BPM uh, in, in the work that they're doing. Others are more formally trained. But how did you get started in BPM? So, yeah, so actually what happens, I, I started with BPM, I, I would say, by accident or something. So I have an IT background, and in 2007, yeah, around 15 years ago or something, yeah, I started um, configuring like a BPM, BPMS um, systems, right? And then I started to lead those implementations, Mainly, you know, like um, in the public and private sector. And by then, uh, like a workflow was like something uh, super um, exciting and it was more, okay, um, we have all of these processes. Now we can start going and measure the performance of those processes. We can start tracking more like a business case scenario, right? And then... Um, mainly for the projects that I was working um, on by then was um, they wanted to go like a paperless. They wanted to go and implement, okay, we have a lot of documentation that we would like, yeah, it's a weight of time, a weight of money, you know, mailing all of those documents. So pretty much that's how I started. So pretty much executing those processes. And then as my career progressed, I was more involved in, and I started to see processes from a different perspective, more like a business point of view, right? And then when you start, you know, digging in that, you say, oh, okay, so we have a process architecture. And then all of these processes are part of that orchestration of uh, processes in the organization. So I think like when you are in an organization and then the organization demands more information about those processes is when you start seeing, okay, and learning about BPM, what is this, what is the methodology is about, and then pretty much it's like, is, you know, every single day you get into BPM more and more and more. And I, I would say like, uh, yeah, I'm super fascinated about this. Yeah, great. That's fantastic. So as someone that comes, uh, that's come from an IT background and then more into the business side of things now, um, do you find that a process is something that is easily understood and adopted by both IT and business? Uh, or do you find that it generally there is an interest in one particular area, whether that be IT or business, and um, that they are, I guess, faced with the challenge of um, uh, encouraging its adoption enterprise wide? What, what are your what have you seen? Um I would say like when you're coming from an IT background, um, you have that idea or because I was a developer a long time ago, right? So you have that mindset of a flow or, you know, something has to happen this and then if something doesn't happen, then else, else, else. So I think like for me, was very easy transitioning from the IT into the business, right? And, and that's why I think that as part of my roles that I have in the past, I started maybe, you know, from a system, then being the administrator or something from an application as well. And then I transitioned into the business uh, process mindset. So, uh, yeah, of course, uh, 
you can go either one or the other, but I think like um, for me, uh, it was easy to transition into the business. But of course, some people prefer only be focused on the business and some people prefer only the IT part of the process because process is broader than just a process model, right? So yes. it goes, it's, yeah, it goes beyond that. I think. Yeah. Right. And uh, I guess regardless of whether it's been adopted by IT or business, um, what drives an organisation to adopt uh, a process-centric approach to managing their organisation? Um, have you found that it, it comes down to a few key motivators or it does it depend on the industry or what have you seen when it, when it comes to driving an organisation to adopt it? So I think like always dollar signs, right? Dollar signs is always, so I think like organizations are always, um, they want to brand a low cost organization with big profits. So usually, you know, our shareholders are always asking, okay, we need to earn more money. We need to be more profitable. We need to get uh, better dividends from, from, from our shares. So I think that, um, and also the willing of, maybe being the best on the market or at least be the best on the market niche where your organization is part of. So I think that those are the drivers where, yeah, pretty much you want to be more efficient. You want to understand your business, right? And then when you are also thinking, okay, um, we have customers. We want to know what our customers are. We want to actually understand more about us. and then. That's that's the main drivers, right? Change, uh, being more profitable, getting more um, turnovers. I think like if we want to improve the businesses that we have, I reckon that when you have that is when you start thinking about, okay, this is something that we should be adopting. And I think it's instead of thinking from the day one in BPM, we are always thinking in processes because we can see like processes are the way that we can go and achieve those goals that we are after, right? Like reducing the cost or whatever. But once one, when, when organizations actually uh, understand about processes, they can see, okay, this is key and this is critical for the success that we want to get, right? And at the same time, we have to manage our customers' journeys as well. So, right, we need to understand why so pretty much it's like we want to get customers uh, we want to you know uh, get some customer from other organizations into ours we want to bring them to us so we need to understand what they want we need to understand how fast or how quick they want something right so sometimes we can say okay we for us getting something to the customer it takes two weeks and then our competitors are doing it in Two days. So what's going on? We need to understand. So I think that all of those kind of things are the drivers that an organization think, okay, we need to start thinking in processes and therefore they start adopting BPM methodology if they have the resources and if they are willing to go the extra mile to do it properly. Yes, right. Now, obviously, it's it's easy for you to understand that link between the strategic objectives and how do we how do we realize that? How do we make that happen? That's through our business processes. But do you uh, do senior leaders get it from your experience? When you look at senior leaders, and they're obviously focusing on the strategy, the the vision, the direction, what we're trying to achieve. Do do, do they recognize that? For us to achieve this, that actually needs to filter down into the, um, the these processes, these tasks, these activities that happen on a day-to-day basis. So senior leaders, I would say that they are not always getting it, right? They, they always said, okay, this is the strategy. This is where we like to take our company. But sometimes we have the strategy going this way, sometimes and processes are going this way or going the other different way. So not always, not always um, LT members get this, right? So usually, you know, um, senior leaders are always into, okay, 
um, seeing um, diagrams, color coded or things like that. They are not actually thinking. Sometimes they, they just only caring about how, how we get there, but not how we get there, right? So pretty much it's more, okay, we need to get this done. This is a, this our, um, these are our objectives, but yeah, I, I don't, yeah, it, it's hard. And, and that is one of the things that I reckon that sometimes um, some BBM initiatives don't work in companies because we don't have enough support from the LT members. Right. Okay. So there would be pe- a lot of people listening to this conversation um, that would find themselves in a similar position right now or, or in that position right now where they, they understand the value of BPM, but they want, they, they're needing to get more buy-in and more sponsorship from the leadership team. How do they go about doing that? And obviously it's not a, a cookie cutter approach that I'm sure for every every uh, organization and every leadership team, there's different levers to pull, there's different drivers, there's different motivators, there's different reasons or, or, or things that are reasons that are keeping um, the, the leadership team awake at night. Um, but do you have sort of any advice um, you can give to people that are looking to get additional like sponsorship or buy-in? So I would say that, we need to educate the business in BPM, right? Because we need the people actually, uh, sometimes they don't understand what BPM is. So you people say, okay, we need to go and map processes, 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 right? But actually um, there are so many components as well. And there are, a lot of things that we need to consider. So when we are talking about a BBM initiative, we need to introduce new concepts in the organizations, like introducing the concept of end-to-end. We need to introduce the concept of what a process owner is, right? So there are a lot of things there. And then through a process model, we can show like the connection between all a lot of different components, like customers, employees, systems, controls. We can, we can, we can um, show different um, ways of doing things, right? And then I, I reckon that also what is important is like understand that sometimes processes are, cro- no, not all, uh, yeah, always I would say, processes are cross-functional. Right. So usually sometimes a BPM initiative starts in a business unit or something, but and they try to map everything there. So they try to keep silos on the business when in fact the business it's broader than that. So all of those kind of um concepts is when we need to educate the business on and we need to try to introduce those. Um, concepts. So back to your question, sorry that I <laughs> I move a bit out of your question. So I think like um, uh, organization to buy in on this one. So you first need to go and try to um, do like quick wins, right? So I think like pretty much you need to demonstrate value on what you're doing, right? And when I'm saying quick wins, it's mainly about getting one of the most uh, critical um, end-to-end process, right? Documenting properly, put uh, measurements in place, you know, trying to see like, okay, what are the improvement opportunities that we have in there? And also I think like, but always you need to go and based on those ones where you can show success more likely, right? So you need to find something in the business that says, okay, we've done this one. And of course you need to try to get like a, build a coalition of different people like IT people, risk people, change and business intelligence, right? So we can have a group of people like actually push for this. Because if you are just only one team in the organization, you also are gonna go, you know, against a big elephant or something trying to go and, <laughs> and do things in your way, uh, but you need support. So you need to, you know, that initiative has to grow in the organization, right? Yeah. 
and and I see I think like you know some some organizations um you know now it's very popular about process intelligence process mining right so by data by getting data by analyzing data you could go and build processes so even like the processes that you are getting from using those tools usually are not the process that you are expecting to see right but it's what's happening so i think like if you can get all of those tools or if you can you know show the business okay we have this spaghetti diagram or something and making them nice for them to to see something you can people can say oh, okay this is good we can do this on the way we can improve this area we can see bottlenecks so i think that you need to find like a little um pieces and bits and pieces doing you know different places so you can go and and trying for, for, you know, the business to accept this one and, and start adopting this methodology. Yeah. 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 I don't know. And also I think like every organization as well has to be ready to go all the extra mile or understand what that extra mile that they want to do it. Right. Because usually I think like when you have um, BPM pretty much it's like you have two, uh, important areas, right? So analyze the business that is running at the moment and then analyzing change, right? So you, we all of those two like live together. Mm -hmm. So I think like once you get that understanding of analyzing how it's running today, where we'd like to go, you and you can show to the executives that I think that is a, a good way to, you know, for them to say, okay, I, I'm going to be more interested in this methodology or in this um, approach. Yeah, okay. So, so we're looking at um, what's possible or, or where, where are we heading in the future? Because I think, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously important to understand where you are right now, that, that baseline, um, what, are, what, are our, what, are, what do our processes um, actually look like, as you, as you were saying about process mining, um, ex extracting that data from your existing systems to, to um, you know, to have a, have a clear understanding of what, well, what's the performance of it at the moment. How do you go about identifying where you want to go? Um, obviously, like, there's got to be some alignment with the strategic objectives, um, but is because obviously some some process improvement initiatives are very incremental and very sort of tweak like very m micro tweaks and then for other uh, process improvement it's more like a radical innovation that you know we've I, we we identified this um, a new way of uh, this particular process it's being done over in this other industry this other sector um, and we think it's going to radically transform um, it's we're going to take a process that normally takes maybe two weeks um, for our customers and we're going to reduce it to one day or two days H how do you go about identifying the target so yeah identifying the target um so you have a lot of, um, you know, tools like uh, Six Sigma or things like that that you can apply to your processes. But usually, so I think like managing the process, actually, um, it's a combination of a lot of things, right? So I think like when you have a process, you have, okay, the measurement, the KPIs that you have on those processes, you can see, you, you always have like a baseline, right? So you are having something that you expect this process to perform this way. So, and then when you have the measurements in place, you can say, okay, this is not going well. So how many activities do we have in terms of maybe check things, right? So we, of course, we need to go and reduce some human intervention as well on those processes, right? Um, we could go and look for automation opportunities on those processes as well, right? But the end in BPM is not for machine, it's for management, right? So what I would like to say with this one, it's more like, because people think like, okay, once we have a good BPM practice in place, we need to automate all our processes. And that's not right. So it's not 100% right. Of course, automating a process is good, right? 
but you also need to go and measure those processes. Mm -hmm. So I think like, um, yeah, there are so many, so many things like you need to consider as well, you know, compliance with, you know, risk compliance, um, technology. There are a lot of components in there that you need to go and, and have a look. Um, yeah, but main, mainly what you need to go and check as well are those critical processes for the organization, right? So I think like um, not every single process is important. So we need to go and check for those processes that are customer facing processes as well to prioritize, to measure, but you always have to have something to, me to measure against to see if that process is doing well, right? And usually if you can, uh, sometimes, you know, if you, capture how many complaints you have from your customer in about particular area, you say, okay, why are we getting so many complaints about something? So that one is like a ring your bell and say, okay, we need to go and check this process. Mm. But yeah, I think that there are a lot of different ways that you can go and, and, and improve and identify changes. Yeah, okay. And, and as a BPM practitioner, how do you see your role changing in the in the coming years because obviously as you were saying before it's not business process machine it's business process management so you know bpm was uh, you know regardless of the technology um it, yep. it's it's you need process ownership um you need a culture of continuous improvement you need yes. these uh different uh, facets of of bpm um regardless of the technology or solution Obviously, in saying that, technology does impact our role as BPM practitioners because instead of, you know, taking a couple of months or a month or so to generate a process after, you know, countless numbers of workshops and, and meetings and, and um, walking around on the factory floor, um, we can now rapidly discover processes through technology and, um, and we can then automate them via bots or different things like that. But as a BPM practitioner yourself, how are you, I guess, preparing yourself um, for the future when it comes to, you know, business process management and what how that's going to evolve? So I think like um, mapping the process is the last step on this one. Right. Mm -hmm. And as you said, the tools help you a lot because some tools you can pretty much model uh, a process on the fly. Mm -hmm. You are in the meeting and you can go and model the process high level thing. So for me, it's more about how, the way that I see my role evolving in organizations is like always trying to educate the business. Right. And always saying, OK, a process is everything. Right. So any decision, anything, you have to check your processes. You have to go and understand how you are performing. So, of course, we need to, to work very close to the strategy team, right? Or innovation team as well, right? And they should be telling us, all right, this is the direction that we want to take the organization, right? And as a process architect, we should be going and see, okay, this is the architecture, this is the process that we have. Are our processes aligning with that, right? Do we need to do changes on those processes? And if that's the case, we need to engage with the process owner, right? We need to say, okay, you are responsible for this one. This is, this is what the organization strategy is. Please um, be sure that the process is going to be going with the organization strategy, right? So my role is going to be more like um, be the liaison between the business and the LT members or the, the, the organization strategy, right? So we need to be there in between and see and see in our mind, we know exactly, uh, you know, if we make a change in this area, it's going to impact the other area. So pretty much we, we, we know what, what that change in the strategy is going to impact in the business, right? So we need to understand exactly every different areas, business unit, because the, the functions or, you know, having like a org structure is going to stay there. So we might need, and sometimes we need to help the process owner 
as, as well, right? Uh, to understand, to see what areas they need to go and talk to. So I think that for us, what we need to um, prepare as well is trying to get an, an, an organization that understands what we are doing. Because if we don't educate the organization, if we don't educate the business and LT members, so process models, process models are going to be consumed only for process professionals, but not for the business. So I would like to see an organization where before even buying an IT system, they go in and say, okay, let's see the, the process that we have. Let's try to understand, right? That would be great if everyone could go and understand that. Even mm -hmm. I'm thinking like when you have like an induction training in the organization where you do like a, you know, a week of induction <laughs> trainings, BPM should be one of those ones as well. Right, right. right. That, 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 I think that that's going to be great. So I think that we need to start to create that mindset. We need to try to, um, yeah, teach the business, okay, processes are important and processes pretty much is like how you connect all the different components and all the different areas. Because on a process, you can overlay controls. On a process, you can overlay risk. You can overlay um, policies, internal, external, whatever. So everything is there. So a process should be the place to go, right? And as an architect, sometimes we hit against a wall because we want to do something properly. We would like to document the business, but sometimes we find out that not much, not many people know about the business. And yeah, so, sometimes you, 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 you get frustrated because like you, you assume that someone <laughs> is going to understand what you're doing, but you find out, okay, we don't know. We just focusing on the outcome. We don't know what's happening in between. So yes. Right. Yeah. I think that's, that's part of our role. And, and sometimes we need to manage frustration on that area as well. Yes. Yeah. Great. And you've obviously mentioned like a number of ways to try and um, encourage this mindset or the culture. Uh, I mean, you were talking about forming some sort of coalition internally, yes. getting people, key stakeholders from different areas um, of the of the business, finding process owners um, for each of these sort of um, different tasks. Office of VBM as well. So I think like um, sometimes you know. An organization has a head of operations because operations is important. They have a head of risk because risk is important. So I think that organizations should have head of processes or a chief process officer eventually, right? So creating something like, um, like when we have a project and we have the PMO, right? The PMO is like the place to go when we start a new project or when we have any um inquiries of our project. Okay, so if we have an office of VPM, that office of VPM should be the god for processes, right? So I think like, um, and that office of VPM should be managing quality, um, you know, everything around, doing the management of the processes pretty much, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The measurements and, and everything. So I think like, yeah, the standards and supporting the process owners as well because the process owners need a lot of support right mm -hmm. because sometimes they say okay a process owner um yeah it's an it has to be a, at executive level right so i think like we cannot um once we engage with a process owner as an executive or a gm right so they start making that mindset like, okay, we need to start focusing on how we're going to be delivering value to our customers, mm -hmm. right? By uh, mm -hmm. the cross-functional processes. We can develop a process, vision, strategy, and objectives on that process as well, right? So, yeah, I think that there are a lot of things there that, um, that, we, can, that we can help the organization. Right. Yeah. Uh, Amelia, Amelia as well, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's more about... Um, you know, when we, 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 sometimes we have our employees rewarded by a function when sometimes that kind of reward system is more, uh, okay, this, I'm going to get a bonus or something because of this is my function. When in fact, I think like 
if we educate the business on rewarding our employees on the outcome or the value that we can deliver to our customers as well. That's that's something uh, I education things as well, because we need to. So our objective is getting more customers and more customers and more customers. So I think like, um, yeah, the function shouldn't be, oh, OK, this is the goal that we need to achieve. Or, you know, the reward shouldn't be, OK, we have to achieve this this goal because our executives want them. So we need to do something that the executive wants us to do this one because the customer is going to benefit with something. Yes, right. Yeah. Yep. No, that's good. That's great. And um, uh, with all of the different organisations that you've been involved in, because you've you know you've worked with some very large organisations and, and quite a diverse range of organisations, um, do you have any examples you can share with us? Obviously, censor out the information you you can't share, but um, of where BPM has been put into practice and it's delivered significant value to the organisation. Maybe it's been a light bulb moment for um, a leadership team in one of the organisations. Maybe it's been a process where you've taken it from three weeks down to three days or something like that. Do you have a a story or two that you can share with the audience uh, about where you've seen it work really well? Um, Yes. Yes, I, I think like, um, okay, let me see. Um, how can I say this? All right. Yeah, so pretty much is um, what, what we've been trying to do is um, managing a process where um, mainly our customers were complaining about the delay, right? And sometimes on missing, on missing, um, responses from us or they were or sometimes missing deadlines or things like that so what happens was like um when we started reviewing the processes pretty much we 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 realized that we didn't know exactly the value chain on that process. We didn't have the end-to-end view. So I think like that's that's something important. You always have to go and see the end to end. So the customer wants something, the customer gets something else from us, right? And then what's happening in between? And then when you start seeing all of those uh, processes there, who are gonna be responsible for that? That is when the organization start thinking about the mindset. You need to bring all together. And that's what I'm saying, breaking that silo mindset that we have in the organization, right? Because people say, oh, my team performs very well. My team is doing well. Uh, you know, um, we are not getting complaints. It's other teams who are getting complaints. Yeah, but we are part of a process, right? So that cross-functional view, so you need to bring everyone together if you can, right? Face-to-face, that would be ideal, okay, on Zoom or <laughs> one of these kind of virtual platforms now. And bring them together and starting to understand, right? Uh, okay, my function is going to be doing that, but when I finish this one, someone else starts. And then they need to start to understand how everything connect, right? Mm-hmm. And then you start questioning them, okay, is this activity adding value to the, to the business? to the process is this activity actually um how does the customer perceive about this activity and then is when you start seeing okay all of these are the areas that eventually we need to go and improve and i think that that's what bpm is about right it's trying to connect all the that's what i'm saying it's not about doing the process model itself the process model is the last step it's trying to um connect the different dots, they connect the different components and everyone agreeing, all right, there are some extra steps that we can remove from the processes or then it's when you can see automation opportunities as well. So I think that those are the kind of things like, and when you start creating this mindset as well, all right, so the process owner also need to be responsible the process owner also need to go and say okay this is the outcome that i want to achieve i need i'm happy with the time that is taking uh the process to complete or you know it's trying to see where to measure so i think that that's that's the part of you know 
BPM, right? It's creating all of those mindset. And once you get that, and, and as a process architect, sometimes we need to help them just to see how everything connect, right? But once you create that one, once you have a team that actually gets it, so it's very, it's, I, I would say that the transitioning, it's very smoothly, I would say, right? You can go and do it very well, but it takes a while. I think BPM is more about understanding that, right? Understanding the different components and yeah, and how you manage sometimes and how you deal with egos in the organization sometimes. Yeah, you know, yeah. trying to break that thing. Okay, my team does everything perfect. Yes, right. That's not okay. right. You, you always have room for improvement. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the process owner as well. So once you have like initial process, the assist, we always need to think on the to be. We yeah. always need to think, okay, how can we improve this one? What are the improvement opportunities that we have in this one, in this yeah. process? So I think that that's, that's the key. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that sounds good. Well, obviously, um, we can only cram so very little into a 30-minute conversation. I, I, I'm pretty, pretty much end all of my uh, conversations like this um, because it is true. Um, you can't fit everything into yeah. such a short conversation. But um, for the audience that, you know, you, you would have piqued the interest of some of the people listening to this, they want to learn more about BPM, um, they're in an organization where it's not a very uh, mature organization from a process perspective. Um, where where do we go to learn more? Um, where do we go to grow in this area of BPM for ourselves as, as pr practitioners, but also for the organization? So process pioneers is one of the places to go, right? <laughs> I could say, yeah, it's been it's been it's been great. So what you've done so far, I think like I think that you have 110 or 120 episodes or something. And of course, I haven't watched all of them, but I watched <laughs> a, a few, right? And you can see, right? So it helps uh, a lot to people who actually want to go and understand a bit more and, you know, listening from other people's experiences as well, right? And I think th and, and, and through your episodes, I've been in touch with other people and, you know, building up the, you know, the collaboration with other people as well. So I think that's, um, this, this, um, series is, is really good. Oh, the other, the other person that I always go to is Roger Trigier. Roger Trigier for me, um, it's great in what he does and you can go to his website or the YouTube channels, or, um, if you are uh, lucky, you can attend one of his conferences. That is um, great. So yeah, you, I think that you 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 have a very close relationship with him. So <laughs> yeah, we've had him on the show a couple of times. Yeah, a couple of times as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so we can we can you can go to VP Trends. You can go to the Association of VPN Professionals. Um, search for um, Germany. It's a country where it's very advanced on this um, topic. So you can go and look for a, lo a lot of. Um, uh, websites and, and blogs in that um, from Germany as well. So I think there are a lot of places to go, but mostly you can read a lot, you can, but until you start actually uh, using it, until you start actually dealing with your organization maturity as well, um, yeah, you, you think, okay, I get this one, I'm going to nail this one, but I think like the best school is um, applying this and yeah. trying to, to do it. But yeah, there are, there are a lot of places to go. So yeah. Great. No, that's fantastic. Well, Roberto, I just want to thank you for sitting down with me, with me today. Um, I've certainly been gleaning a lot from our conversation. Every conversation I'm, I get to participate in, it's, I find it is quite unique and, and a unique perspective. So I just want to thank you for sitting down with me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh, same. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been a pleasure as well for me to be here. So I cannot believe it that after watching so many episodes, finally, <laughs> I'm in one of them. So, in one of them. <laughs>